Hello and welcome back to RPG Research. And uh, this is our weekly GM training Saturday from 9 a.m. to noon Pacific time every Saturday here on twitch.tv forward slash RPG Research. We just finished talking about game master rosters and initiative tent trackers, etc., uh, to help optimize and improve your GM techniques. Now we're going to focus on voicing notes and techniques and helping each GM come up with a minimum of five different voices that they can draw on as a regular repertoire and build upon. If you can do more voices, great. If not, at least five is a reasonable variety uh, to help your players have a better experience in their immersion and potential for flow state. So Dan in Brazil, you said you wanted to talk first about some of the tips and pointers from the theater side. Why don't you go ahead and uh, cover uh, your checklist on that, and I'll, I'll interject accordingly. Very well. Uh, as a student of a professional program in theater, I've been given a few tips. First of all, it's useful to, to think of your voice, not as just your voice, but as, a, as an extension of your body. It sounds, it sounds so obvious, but it really does make a difference. You look after your health. Uh, you need to look after your health, you need to take care of posture. Hawk already previously talked about how uh, you enunciate, how you, your posture helps your voice. And there are a few tips that I've received that are, are very useful for thespians, but could also be uh, applicable to role-playing gaming. Very much so. Avoid, avoid sweet, sticky substances, chocolate in particular, for voicing, because it tends to... Uh, make your throat a bit sticky and uh, strain your voice. If you want something that helps your voice, generally uh, juices, natural juices, things that, you know, lubrify it a bit. Um, and that's avoid... going, that is going to vary. So some people, uh, both coming, so I come from both the theater background and the opera background and singing background. And it's very fascinating how some of these semi-pro and pro singers and, and, and thespians swear by one thing and against something else. So there's, there's general traditions and then there's individual variants. Uh, you know, some people swear off avoid all dairy products because it makes your mucus thicker. Uh, other people, that's what they use to help, as you say, lubricate your voice and such. If I, if, for me, it's a real issue. Between my asthma and other things, dairy products make it harder for me to breathe and get gunky in my throat and so I always try to avoid dairy products for days before I'm expected to do a performance or something especially singing which is the most challenging for me and uh, but other people for them the dairy helps uh, other people use hot tea with lemon um, other people find that dries their throat out too much That's so what I'm doing right now yeah so everybody's gonna have a little different experience or hot tea with honey you know mm -hmm. things like that you're going to have to experiment and see what works for you and your individual body. Um, but, but Dan in Brazil makes a great point that uh, these are important things. Your, your food and diet and what you drink, hot or cold, um, what the content is of it, how, how frequently you do it, like between things. These are all important considerations to, to bring in, 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 into uh, your efforts with voicing. P please continue, Dan. Yes, thank you, Hawk, because, uh, you know, I'm having one course and every course is different and they have their own uh, tradition, so to yes. speak, so it's good to have an outside perspective. Yep. Continuing on, another thing that is often neglected is breathing. And yes. when I say breathing, it's uh, before you speak and during pauses when you speak. One of the things that uh, everyone's told in theater or even in uh, a corporate setting is to Avoid, uh, uh, you know, these uh, filler talk. When you want to think about something, stop. Give it some pause. Right, instead of ums and ahs. Yeah. Yeah. And take some time to breathe because it really helps. Because if you're in theater or in an RPG where you have to make a long line and, you know, you're making your big villain speech where... Oh, I am going to take over these lands, and everyone who stands against me will be reduced to ashes, and in these ashes will live the... You can pause a little bit, just so you don't lose your, your power, shall we say, and I speak that seriously, as in your, 
where I come from, we like to call this installation, how uh, firmly established you are, how firm your voice is and how consistent it is. You, so breathing is important, posture is important, so much so that as I'm speaking due to my headphones, I am, um, I'm standing up because I couldn't quite enunciate quite so clearly, assuming that I'm speaking clearly, if I were sitting down, for instance. Yep. And I think that about covers it. So if you could continue on, I... Okay. If I remember anything else, I might yep. point it out. But Please do. All right. So, uh, yeah. So bring up these healthy techniques. Keep your health in mind. However, the show must go on. You're going to have times that, uh, whether you're on stage, whether you're singing, and whether you're doing a, a game mastering session, you're going to have days that your voice just isn't with you. And you need to still power through. The show must go on. Uh, you may need to tone down, right? So, for example, uh, when, when in opera and such, if you're in the choir, during, you know, most of the time they're going to be pushing you to equal things out, but it's better that you have, that you can make it through the whole opera, even if it's at a choir tone, because it's the overall timbre of the choir is the amalgamation of voices rather than any one voice. And your weaker contribution is better than no contribution, but back it off take the pressure off your, your neck and your body and your diaphragm and your throat and all of that um, if you're having a bad day, if you're fighting a head cold and you've got a sore throat, you've got laryngitis, whatever, you're still going to have to go up there, but you're going to have to do a reduced version of yourself to try to make it, you have to pace yourself. So really, really important to be able to pace yourself and know what you're going to be doing. So, for example, if you're at a convention running a game where it tends to be very noisy, big hall, potentially thousands of people in this very noisy you know, cement floors, metal roofs, bad acoustics, it's very loud, and you're going to need to be able to be heard over it, but not blow your voice out. So if I'm talking like this, it's very stressed, and I'm going to blow my voice out. But if I open it up and relax, and we'll talk about that a little bit, I can still be heard at the other end of the table, and I'm not feeling stressed in my voice. Mm -hmm. But you have, to, you have to use your whole body, and it comes more from your diaphragm, rather than from your, your neck and chest. And... That is a train, formal training thing. We're not going to be able to go deep into that. Uh, the main thing I'm going to be working on with you guys, although we're going to cover all of that briefly, is giving you some specific character voices that you can use over and over and, and mix as you wish. But pace yourself. Know that the session is going to be three, four hours minimum. And whether it's public speaking or whether it's a game in a noisy environment, pace yourself accordingly. Food and drinks, as, as he brought up, very important consideration. You may need to keep some water or something handy, uh, you know, whatever works for you best for your, your body. Breathing is critical, not only for dramatic pause and such. Uh, you don't want your sentences to run out of oxygen at the end, right, you know, because you're reading a long narrative and such. Don't be afraid if you're reading a narrative to add extra commas. In fact, often the extra commas, that extra dramatic effect, really helps enhance things. Uh, Something I need to work with all of you more, including John, is be more over the top. Um, generally, this is, a, this is a theater thing. If you, you know, it depends on the type of theater. But for theater especially, it's less so with, with the camera and stuff where you have to actually tone it down more. But with theater, usually if you feel like you, you, you've toned down the hamminess enough, you're not being hammy enough. You're not being dramatic enough. You're not being out there enough. Now, again, it's going to vary. It's going to vary with the type of genre and the uh, environment you're in, what, what size of theater and what type it is. You know, That's going to vary. But especially with beginning actors and such, it, most of the time they're going to tell you if, you if you feel like you're overdoing it, you're only just doing it enough. It, for it to show up on stage, you have to really be more over the top for it to show up. And a lot of people who are starting out don't realize that they're not being hammy enough. The, the greater actors that you see out there, they are more extreme than you would be in normal life. But it works, whether it's on stage or screen. It, really, it just makes for better show. Same thing as a game master. If you're more over the top with the drama in, in, in overacting, that actually, in a game setting, usually is going to help. Now, there'll be times where you need to be flat affect and not have any real variation and keep it flat and dynamics, etc. That may be appropriate to a situation. 
But the problem is too many GMs are just that way. Yeah. <laughs> They're flat in affect and dynamics, etc. So the breathing... I'd have to... Go ahead. I just have to point out that uh, I have a bit of a disagreement here, so I agree with the sentiment. Lots of people, both in theater and in RPGs, think to have... Uh, they do not have the courage to go out, but I still wouldn't say that they need to go hammier necessarily, in the same way that you can make your voice enunciate better without going louder. This is actually one of the things that I sort of bothers me about the work of Zombie Orpheus Entertainment, is that they... Uh, either are subdued or they're sometimes a little hammy, which is appropriate for what they're going for. But sometimes I'm not sure if, for instance, you can make something that has range, that has reach, that has presence, but not necessarily be something that is as hammy as stereotypical uh, medieval bard, let's say. Right. Just so you don't... It's not a, it's not a, a bidimensional spectrum is what I mean. You can go different ways. You don't need Definitely. to be hammy in order to appear. Right, just well, so, so hammy was just one example of increasing your dynamic range. Hammy is just one type of dynamic range. You can be more dramatic without being hammy. So, the and, and again, there's going to be times it's appropriate to have a more subdued range and other times a more broad range. Um, but my, but what I have seen the majority of GMs is they're too flat in affect, too flat in body language, and too flat in, in vocal dynamic range. And so it tends to be kind of monotonous narrative, and that is boring over time. At first, you, you can tolerate it, but people start to tune out. Mm -hmm. So if you can have it be more dramatic with pauses and dynamic range, etc., you don't have to go full-blown ham. Um, but, but the point I'm trying to make is that you have more dynamic range and exaggerate more than you would uh, in a normal conversation. Uh, a lot of people just read like they normally speak, and that's boring at, at a tabletop game to do that all the time. From time to time, it's appropriate. But as the DM, you want to you wanna encourage people to kind of step outside their comfort zone just a little bit to get into character more, and you lead by example in that case. And that's where voicing is critical and, and having this range. And, and, and Dan in Brazil, I don't think we're disagreeing. I just I, I understand what you're saying. Being hammy is not always appropriate for the campaign. When it's a serious setting or something, that's not necessarily going to be appropriate. Um, so my, my apologies if, if that I overemphasize hammy as an example of just a, a wider range uh, of dynamics there to uh, express yourself and the narrative and your, and your NPCs. So that would be kind of like... Hello. I, I perfectly understand it, it's, uh, because I understand that, that I actually have a fear that in saying that I might be discouraging people from speaking louder, which I totally wouldn't want to happen. I'm not talking about louder. That if, I'm not, I'm not talking about people, louder. There are people in RPGs that say, oh, I don't want to play an RPG because I, I don't want to do this uh, act kind of acting. I don't like this kind of hammy acting just to say that, oh, it's not just that. It has as much range as... The entirety of human media and storytelling, essentially. Sure. Again, I'm not talking about just being louder. I, I, I'm just talking about the GM, and not every player has to do that over the top. But the GM, to illustrate different non-player characters, the more the variables are distinctive from NPC to NPC, the more readily the players are going to be able to have their suspension of disbelief and keep track of each NPC as a distinctive personality. And that's going to make the immersion and real and experience of the world feel more real for them in a positive way uh, for the game. And so there's just a lot of variables that we're going to go over here. Um, but yeah, and okay. there are people who aren't comfortable with having to act at all, and that's fine if you're just doing a recreational game that's not broadcast. That's okay. Mm -hmm. You can encourage them, but it's always challenged by choice. And, but the GM should still be setting a higher bar for their own performance versus the others. Now, does that mean you have to be an actor to be a game master? No. But it does help make you one of the better game masters that stands out from the crowd if you can enhance that ability. It's a set of tools that you can utilize. Yeah, and all of these, everybody's going to apply in, in different ways. Uh, you know, your mileage will may vary as per your own application. Danielle, did you have anything you want to say? No, uh, it all sounds pretty fair right now. Okay, Dan in Brazil, sound like you're about to say something again. Yeah, uh, in order to 
I think a lot about acting, but even outside of acting, I, uh, in my uh, classes, we say that everybody has a capacity to act. One of the things that proper enunciation, one of the good examples of proper enunciation is, not that I can't quite say here, but basically, when people use tough words, for instance, generally when they use those, they are reacting to a kind of situation, to a kind of discomfort, and they naturally, organically enunciate in a, in a way that is really expressive. We don't necessarily be in hand, we don't necessarily be outrageous, but it's something that really comes from within, I would say. And I think that would be a good example of the kind of expressiveness that I'm sort of alluding to, just to clarify. Okay, great. Thank you for that. We had a little bit of trouble understanding you. I think we got the general gist of it. Uh, it's certainly having that energy come across um, is important. Um, so breathing, very important, having enough breath. So considerations for that, your body posture. If you're slumped over forward, you're compressing your diaphragm. You're giving yourself less ability to expand your, your lungs and, and your breath capacity. So keep your posture upright. You don't want to be overly stiff because you've also got to be relaxed. But good posture so you're upright and you have more room for your diaphragm to expand. Don't be afraid to let your gut stick out a little bit for breathing purposes, right? Other times you might want to keep it in and, you know, keep that gut in and, and keep those muscles strong. But for large breaths, you got to let that diaphragm really expand. And that gives you more capacity, especially if you're going to be doing a long oratory or narrative. You want to be able to take nice, deep breaths. And practice that, just nice, deep And another exercise you can do besides the intake is a slow release. So, and then very slowly, very slowly, with control using your diaphragm, not your throat. Use your diaphragm slowly, slowly to let that air out, but without stressing your throat. You're not using the throat to cut it off. You're using your diaphragm to control the airflow. So I'm trying to keep my throat open and relaxed. And letting my diaphragm control that breathing and just letting that control the in and the out without the tension of the neck. So that's an exercise you want to practice. And then practice it while talking. And, and, and not big talking, just like I was doing. Just, okay, I'm using my diaphragm rather than my throat to control how much air is coming out. And that'll help you gain control over that abdomen. So remember that about posture. Let your shoulders be upright, but not tense, not around your neck, not pulled back too far, not too far forward, you know, try to be in a nice comfortable position without slouching. Um, neck, might want to work your neck loose a little bit, I have to do it all the time because that's where my tension goes is my neck and jaw and back. And uh, so maybe before a session, do a little stretching and such that includes your neck, back, shoulders, etc. It's a good thing to just loosen up, get the blood flowing, and stretch out a little bit before a session. Uh, just good things to do. Uh, try to stand up about you know every 45 minutes or so, if you can, even if it's just briefly. Uh, watch out for those leg clots and such from sitting too long. Programmers, it's a real serious issue. But even in gaming, you know, there's a little too much sitting, so it's, it's good to stand up from time to time. You can do it for dramatic effect. Great. If not, just stand up to stretch a little. And you can even do it as a formal thing. So, okay, everybody, let's get up and stretch real quick. Okay, back into the game, you know. Um, jaw, don't forget the tension in your jaw. If you feel, if you stop and feel, you're like, oh, wow, I've got all kinds of tension in there. Take a minute to work it loose. Work your jaw, work your face. Give your face a nice stretch, mm -hmm. you know, and let it loosen up a little bit. You know, even, even apply pressure and kind of massage it out a little bit. Take some of that tension out. Now, your jaw muscles that control that are back here, not far from your ears. Mm -hmm. Up here, there isn't really any muscle. Oh no, there. what I was doing is, uh, um, uh, I there's these things on right below my teeth uh, that are kind of growths coming this way. That is, oh. uh, um, uh, I, I've been doing some research on it, and it's uh, an indicator that I've been holding a lot of tension. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then your tongue. Your tongue can get tense and tight, and you can, you can start to get a uh, Clint Eastwood or John McCain style of talking. So you start talking teeth. to chairs? People do that. What's that? You start talking to chairs? To chairs? Chairs. Empty chairs? 
I, I don't get the bad reference. reference. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. <laughs> there was a scenario where Clint Eastwood was uh, straw manning uh, one of the, the political opponent by talking to an empty chair. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I forgot about his little political stint there. <laughs> uh, so those are just some things about muscles and such. Just And there's a lot more. We're not going to go heavily into depth, though, but these are little considerations to start out with, a little checklist to quickly do a quick assessment. You might even want to have it on the back of your screen that says very quickly, posture, diaphragm, shoulders, neck, jaw, tongue. Just do a quick assessment, breathing. Do a quick assessment as you're getting yourself in the game, and then periodically check yourself on that. Then we do have things like projection, which is getting it out there. And again, if you're not tensing up your neck, you can do this for a long time without stressing your voice at all. And it's getting out there. I've, I've been regularly unmiked. All these people who use mics, I think they're wusses, right? <laughs> a mic? Who needs a mic? So projection, generally, uh, and, and this is operatic, so you're using your diaphragm, your throat is open, you're actually hitting more of the top of your head and letting that whole acoustic project outward. Uh, but the key thing is keep your throat relaxed rather than tense. A lot of people, a lot of people when they're shouting get very tense in here, they're tense here, and they're tense here. And that's how they're shouting. They're going to blow their voice very quickly. But if you have that open and projection and it's resonating off, you can do that for a long time and, you, and keep your voice. Um, without other people being here, I can't really give a lot of pointers on that. But Dan, we do need to work with you on your projection. So we're going to start with you, uh, Danielle and Dan, uh, in, in Brazil. It's hard to do remotely, but we'll at least try a little bit. So Dan... Um, just grab any, flip to any paragraph in the book. And I'm going to have you just do a little reading. And we're not going to worry about all the other variables. You can do it monotone, whatever. But I want you to do it with the controlled diaphragm, trying to keep your throat from clenching up. and But do it at a normal projection where you're not really trying to push it. It's in a quiet environment. You're not trying to be quiet, but you're just doing a normal reading. Just go ahead and read one, one paragraph at random. Yeah. So regular? Yeah. Sometimes it makes sense to split up the party to split up an adventuring party, especially if you want one or more characters to scout ahead. You can form okay. multiple parties. That's good. Now, getting posture, diaphragm, controlling through your diaphragm, loosen up that throat a little bit, and now you're going to let it come out through your diaphragm control, not your neck throat, and you're gonna to try to project. We're not gonna worry about enunciation or anything else yet, just the projection. So you're trying to get more volume with, and keep, you're going to keep having to get loose in your neck. You have to actively stop it because it's going to want to keep clenching. Mm -hmm. And you're wanting to just keep that and try to use your diaphragm to control your breathing. So same paragraph again, but now with projection. Sometimes okay. it makes sense to split up an adventuring party. Especially if you want one or more characters to scout ahead. Keep working on the diaphragm. Keep going. You can form multiple parties, each moving at different speed. Each group has its own front, middle, and back ranks. Already a huge improvement there. That was much better with that projection. I, you had to keep catching yourself, mm -hmm. so you have to practice this. So literally, yeah. at home, in the car, whatever, whether you have something memorized that you can recite or while you're reading, practice that with the, the neck and the diaphragm and such and getting that, getting that projection out there in a clear way mm -hmm. with, and keep catching that neck because that's what takes people out very quickly. Uh, Danielle, uh, since you're having issues, we're not going to push you on that right now. And Dan in Brazil, uh, you... I've you know, never had a problem with projecting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, and in Brazil, you've got your training there, so we, you know, since you're remote and stuff and I can't really watch you, and, uh, uh, and it's hard to tell uh, the dynamics over, these, over this internet connection, I'm not going to push you guys on that particular one. Some of the other variables here we will, but projection is not one I can help a whole lot with without being able to see you better. And, and, and Dan, in Brazil, you've got your training going on, so I'm not too worried for you on the, in that case. Uh, so the uh, next one is enunciation, so that you can be heard and clearly without any mumbling and without marbles in your mouth and without any blah, 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 right? So it's really important and it feels awkward to really enunciate everything very clearly. And it may come across as a bit snooty or snobbish to some people. 
However, when you're game mastering, that's not entirely a bad thing. People want to perceive the game master as all powerful, all knowing, you know, knowledgeable without being a jerk, but knows their stuff. They want to have confidence in their GM and their ability. And enunciating clearly without overdoing without overdoing it so much that it's completely each and every what depends you know, do the Shatner thing. Um, you can take it too far. But uh, yeah, comic book enunciation. Yes. <laughs> You can take it too far, and so it, it does take practice to get that right balance where you have the enunciation that's sufficient without it being over the top. Uh, Dan, you definitely need to work on your enunciation. Um, the, you, you are struggling with mumbling and, and being difficult to hear from time to time. I know that's because there's some other things struggling with, their, with, with speech, but you want to really work on that because that has a huge impact on the player experience of your game. And when, when you start out, it's less of an issue, and this is for all GMs. As the game progresses, you get more tired, it's easier to start mumble and, and mumbling and, and forget all these things. So always have on your little checklist there, projection, enunciation. So you get a little checklist about posture, diaphragm, shoulders, neck, jaw, tongue, projection, enunciation. That should be on your uh, GM screen as a reminder. So with enunciation, I want you to take that same paragraph. We're not going to worry about projection this time, so back to normal, how you read, except you're going to enunciate it as clearly as you can, and even do it a little over the top just to see how that does for you. Sometimes it makes sense to split an, an adventuring party, especially if you want one or more characters to scout ahead. So, the pauses were, were something else, but your enunciation was much better and did not sound over the top. Mm -hmm. Did that feel over the top for you? No, okay. it didn't. So you want to do that as a bare bones minimum. Mm -hmm. Try to do a little more over the top without so much pause in between, but still enunciating clearly. Not exactly sure how to you know, push okay. it over the over um, top. Which, which book is that, Player's Handbook? This is Player's Handbook, page 183. Alright. Grab copy here. So, 5th edition, Player's Handbook, page 183. <coughs> Box at the top right, splitting up the party. And I need to get some water here in a minute, because my lungs are tightening up too. Okay, split up the party. Sometimes it makes sense to split an adventuring party, especially if you want one or more characters to scout ahead. See how I'm really over the top there? Mm -hmm. That's too much. I want you to try to do too much. Because I'm just really exaggerating. Each syllable and such is very exaggerated. Without long pauses. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm pausing because I'm trying to figure out the... I understood. Yeah. Sometimes it makes sense to split an entire and ah. So let's stop that already. Yeah. So you're you're really doing more on the pauses and you're bringing in projection, which is good. But sometimes. Sometimes. Stronger. Sometimes. Sometimes. There you go. See how that was harsher and stronger. So try that. Try doing it that extreme. Okay. Sometimes it makes. But without the long pauses, though. <laughs> I know, this is, this is what you're going to practice. Sometimes it makes sense to split an adventuring party, especially if you want one or more characters to scout ahead. You can form multiple parties, each moving at different speed. Okay, now I'll try to do that again without so many long pauses between. Exact same sentence, do it again. <coughs> Sometimes it makes sense to split an adventuring party, especially if you want one or more characters to scout ahead. Okay. So, started strong and got to about where we actually wanted you to be as you kind of fizzled down. Mm -hmm. So let's do the next one now where we want you to do it. So now your posture, projection, which you're kind of already doing anyway, you'll notice they kind of interact that mm -hmm. way. So let's do the next one 
with good projection and with good enunciation without it being over the top. And you do not want to have those Shatner pauses. <laughs> so you can from multiple parties, each moving at a different speed. Uh, each group has its own front, middle, and back ranks. You see, and that's enunciated, but it's flowing and it's projecting. And yes, it sounds like I'm being a little dramatic about it. That's more interesting than you can form multiple parties, each moving at a different speed. Each group has its own front, middle, and back ranks. I'm gonna try Which one's more interesting to listen to? The first one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> you can form multiple. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah. It's all right. Fumbled. It's okay. You can form multiple. You can form multiple parties, each moving at okay. a. Tone it down just a little bit. Okay. Um, projection's fine. A little too much exaggeration. A little too much enunciation. We're toning it down just a hair. You can form multiple parties, each moving at different at a different speed. Okay. Have the pauses only at the commas. You your first part before the comma was fine. The second half you were pausing every word. So only pause at the comma. So you can form multiple parties, each moving at a different speed. You can form multiple parties, each moving at a different speed. Much better. So it's not perfect, but it, it's much better about where we want you to be. So go ahead and do the next sentence. Each group has its own front, middle, and back ranks. Each group has its own front, middle and back ranks. Okay. Tone down the, the list a little bit. There's a little over the top for this type of reading. That might be appropriate if it was a more dramatic reading, but this is just reading some rules, but you want to still make it interesting. So try that again without quite exaggerating front, middle, and back as much. Okay. Each group has its own front, middle, and back ranks. Still too much for that list. First part is great, and then you get front, middle, and back ranks. It's a little too much. Each group has its own front, middle, and back ranks. That's better. Okay. So th just keep practicing these things, that these, those are examples. Again, we're not going to spend a ton of time on all these things, but they're a good foundation. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Danielle, do you have something you can do a quick reading from? Danielle. Uh, yes. Sorry, my, uh, my button didn't work. Okay. okay. Uh, I have all my friends are dead in front of me. Okay, so just let's start with a sentence. I want you to just read it in normal, non-projecting, non-enunciating, like you're just talking to somebody in, in a relaxed, mellow environment. Just read that first sentence. Okay. All my friends are dead. Oh, okay. Well, maybe a little longer <laughs> the next sentence as well then. <laughs> yeah, okay. And then, um, okay, so the next page is most of my friends are dead. Thing you want to read briefly. Um, right, let me just get this here. Uh, I'm going to be I'm right. Just opening a PDF. And okay, I'm going to be right. Back with you. I'm be right back. I got to get a little something to drink here. Uh, so. I, I got Ready Player One right here. Okay. He'll be right back. Hawk is not back yet. Hello? 
Hawk, Hawk is not back yet. Am I muted? No, you're not I muted. I can hear you. Oh, Hawks are fine. Yes, Hawk, Hawk's not back yet. What's that? I was letting Dan know that uh, you weren't back yet. <laughs> okay, I'm back now. <coughs> All right, Dan in Brazil, give it a shot. So start with just a casual, just normal talking to somebody, no a special enunciation or projection, just reading, you know, a, a short sentence or paragraph. Dan in Brazil. We can't hear you. Dan in Brazil, can you hear us? Did you lose him? I'm going to try a refresh on my end. Dan in Brazil, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, we can hear you now. All right, so just a, a casual reading, like you're just conversationally talking to somebody. No special projection or enunciation, just a short sentence or paragraph. Right. Oh, uh, it's echoing again in my... Yeah, let me... I'll, I'll mute it on my end then. Go ahead. All right, thank you very much. Soon we shall know more than a seer could tell us. Son, have you heard the vote condemn your bride? Or are you here, madam against your father? Or are we friends, whatever I may do? All right, now let's add it with uh, projection but without enunciation. Soon we shall know more than a seer could tell us. Son, have you heard the vote condemn your bride? And are you here, maddened against your father? Or are we friends, whatever I may do? So that had a combination of both projection and enunciation. Can you, can you try to keep it as casual as the first reading, but still have the projection? It's tricky. It's right. tricky oh, to separate oh, right. the two. Yeah, especially when you practice not to separate them. <laughs> All right. Soon we shall know more than the seer could tell us. Sam, have you heard the book Condemned Your Bride? Or are you here maddened against your father? Or are we friends, whatever I may do? And now combine the two with projection and enunciation. Go a little over the top on the enunciation. Soon we shall know more than a seer could tell us. Son, have you heard the vote condemned your bride? And are you here, maddened against your father? Or are we friends, whatever I may do? Thank you. All right. And uh, Danielle. Okay, I have pretty clear one. Go for it. Uh, so The day after the explosion in the stacks, there was a brief story about it on the local uh, on the local news feeds. They showed a video clip of volunteers sifting through the wreckage for human remains. Okay. What, now now yeah. do it with projection but not, not heavy enunciation. The day after the explosion in the stacks. There was a brief story about it on the local news feed. They showed a video clip of volunteers sifting through the wreckage for human remains. Good. Now do it with exaggerated enunciation in addition to the projection. <clears throat> the day after the explosion in the stacks, there was a brief story about it on the local news feeds. Okay, they showed a video clip of volunteers sifting through the wreckage for you're human remains. You're hyper-breathing on that. Tone down the breathing. That was a much, much windier than I don't breathe like that. I don't think I could make it. You can. <laughs> you, no, you can do it. You were just doing it with the projection before. Tone it down a little as far as the, the breathing. That was making it harder on you to, to use that much breath. So to, control, okay. control with your abdomen the, the breath a little better. You can still enunciate without having to add so much wind behind it. Because then you're going to run out and you're going to okay. make yourself lightheaded. <laughs> <coughs> The day after the explosion in the stacks, there was a brief story about it on the local news feeds. They showed a video clip of the volunteers sifting through the wreckage for human remains. Okay, a little more enunciation. Okay. The day after the explosion in the stacks, there was a brief story about it on the local news feeds. 
Okay, still, still a little mumbly, so yeah, you're going to want to enunciate your consonants more clearly and exaggerate them. So your T's need to be a stronger T and your N a more N to make those little stronger consonants, otherwise it's a little mumbly. Okay. The day after the explosion in the stack. There was a brief story about it on the local news feeds. Okay, so the day after the explosion in the stacks. Stronger enunciation on those consonants. Okay. The day after the explosion at the stacks, there was a brief story about it on the local news feeds. Much better. That's much more interesting. It, it feels weird, but that, is, that comes across much better. And, and it still needs to be refined, but that, that's in the right direction. Questions, comments so far before we go on to other variables here? Dan, local Dan. I was looking up uh, um, uh, specific phrases to train for uh, okay. enunciation. Well, there's, there's a gazillion out there, yes. There, mm -hmm. there are many exercises. You, everybody has their different favorite ones. Pick whatever you want, whatever works for you. So that, that is definitely something you want to practice. Uh, Dan in Brazil. Did you have any questions or comments before I move on to the other variables? Mm, not really, no. Okay. Um, That's fine. And Danielle, did you want to say anything before I move on to the additional variables? No, I think we're good. Good. All right, so next is uh, keep in mind body language, the power of body language in your presenting different non-player characters, right? This is mostly about non-player characters for GMs. It, it has a ripple effect through how the players behave, but your body language is part of your character, your NPC that you're presenting. So there might be times that it may make it hard to project that you need to play a character that's all slumped and mopey. So have the slumped shoulders for it. Now I'm still keeping actually, even though I'm slumping my shoulders is less than ideal, I'm still trying to keep my abdomen in the right position so that I can still enunciate, and I still project and enunciate clearly, but I need to change it into this mopey type character, because it doesn't really matter much anyway, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so this body language helps feed their perception of this person as insecure and negative, versus really exaggerated Superman type pose, really you know, upright, and he's a knight, right? <laughs> and he's really out here. And that body language, even just sitting here in a chair, um, I like to do the Muppet dance. <laughs> Muppet dance, right? But uh, that body language has a big effect about how people interpret your character. Also, your, your pose and posture. Uh, it, it, and, I, and I don't mean like the posture of being careful, just like getting in a position like this. So leaning on the bar, you're talking like in the picture there of whatever's uh, the bar shot there. Mm -hmm. Leaning forward on the bar, talking in kind of a comradely way or on the table like, Hey, buddy, I got something I want to share with you, right? So, cr creating this body language dynamic because remember, a lot is subscript. Mm -hmm. A lot of how we interpret meaning is based on body language, not just what is said, but how it's presented and how our bodies are posed. So, remember to be okay to move around in your chair and do these things. Sometimes you may need to stand up. Mm -hmm. Be careful about standing too much. I know you do that a lot, and it's more comfortable. Yeah. Uh, for some people, that can be really disturbing and intimidating. Uh, especially if you have particularly meek players like little girls and others who are clearly shy or, or you're going to work with people who've been abused. Doing this is highly intimidating. The taller you are, the more so. <laughs> yeah. But it's highly intimidating and disturbing and can really, especially if they're close to you, upset them. Doing this is even worse. Now, there are times that may be appropriate for dramatic effect. Mm -hmm. But if you do it all the time, then it loses dramatic effect. And you need to know your audience. You need to be careful who you're working with that that isn't going to upset them and make them very uncomfortable. Because this is really assuming a very superior position to an inferior position, and that can create all kinds of undesired dynamics that you may not be aware of. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so again, pose, posture, you know, the angle you're at, squaring off this way versus straight on. Keep those in mind. These are little things that really help enhance. And you'll find it makes it easier. So you may have a character who's always like this. This is how he always is. <laughs> And it helps you get into character mm -hmm. for your NPC to get in this pose. Yeah. So, because that's all part of muscle memory and body learning, etc. Uh, then, uh, 
So I'm going to move that one down because that's one of the harder ones. Let's see. I'm going to move that probably near the end. So another one is pausing. Now, you can totally go over the top. Each and every life depends upon my every decision. You know, the Shatner way, right? Yeah. <laughs> way over the top. I'm going to pick on him. I, I'm entertained by him. I'm so glad he's able to make fun of himself. And he does a good job. I saw him when he was live here in Spokane. He was hilarious. It was great. Um, but he rightly gets a lot of flack for his dramatic style. <laughs> you know, and he came from a Shakespearean background, but didn't have the same talent, if you will, as, as uh, uh Patrick Stewart and others and such who came Lee from similar Moy. backgrounds, but were did a better job. I think with it. I, uh, yeah, with the way he's acting, I I would not have picked a Shakespearean background. Yeah, no, he did. That's the problem. He was still in dramatic Shakespearean mode all the time, except that he's trying to read a script that way all the time in a contemporary setting. Okay. I that's what happened. That. No, that's what it is. That's exactly what it is. He took your Shakespearean stuff and he's not able to modify it to contemporary setting. He's stuck in that reading style. <laughs> and there are times it's appropriate and there's times it's just ridiculous. So, but he's exaggerating what all the good actors and voice actors do is add dramatic pauses and try not to rush things unnecessarily. Not how many times you need to do it quickly because the fat guys are coming up from the hills and need to hurry and get to save the day. But, you know, it might be appropriate to rush it. But other times, take a breath after the commas. Really put in those pauses where it makes sense. Now, if you put a pause every single word, that is not the same effect. But if you do it where it's appropriate, it creates a little bit of suspense on what's coming next. It makes people lean forward, wanting to hear what you have to say next. So pausing is very important. So going back to the sentence there, I want you to have some nice, deep, take a breath, pause after each column. Sometimes, it makes sense to split an adventuring party, especially if you want one or more characters to scout ahead. There's no comma there. I was adding it. <laughs> Okay, that's not an appropriate place for a pause. Okay. One or more players... To scout ahead. To scout ahead. That, that is, there's a reason there's no comma there. So try that again. The other ones were fine. Sometimes. It makes sense to split an adventuring party. Especially if you want one or more characters to scout ahead. Good. Now, do it with projection and enunciation. Body posture. Ab abdominal muscles. Diaphragm. Throat relaxed. Sometimes... It makes sense to split an adventuring party. Was there a comma after sense? This is where you have to yeah. time your breathing. Yeah. Sometimes. It makes sense to split an adventuring party. Especially if you want one or more characters to scout ahead. Okay. Could use work, but that you get the idea, right? Mm -hmm. So, Danielle. the explosion in the stacks. There was a brief story about it on the news feed. They showed a video clip of the volunteers sifting through the wreckage of human remains. Okay, little, take a little bit longer breath between each comma. Okay. <clears throat> the day after the explosion in the stacks, there was a brief story about it on the... <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> Oh, sorry. I totally got too good in the middle of that. The day after the explosion in the stacks, there was a brief story about it on the local news feed. Okay, now add your, a video now add your projection okay. add your projection enunciation. So remember body posture, abdominal muscles, diaphragm, loosen the throat, and try that again with the pauses. <clears throat> the day after the explosion in the stacks, there was a story about it on the local news feed. They showed a video clip of volunteers sifting through the wreckage for human remains. Okay, thank you. And Dan in Brazil. Right, I'll just 
read this snippet from Antigone again. Soon we shall know more than a fear could tell us. Son, have you heard the vote condemned your bride? And are you here, maddened against your father? Or are we friends, whatever I may do? Good. That works. All right. So that's pausing exaggerating the pausing the tendency is people to rush through and lose that dramatic pause and it can really make a difference it makes you stand out from other people who just read straight through or or do it too little if you watch actors and listen to voice actors you will hear much more of, of an exaggeration of those pauses than you would normally do and it makes a significant difference the timbre, the overall sound of your voice. So we're going to be getting towards creating distinctive characters. Actually, I'm going to move that a little bit because that's a little more advanced. So I'm going to move that down. Let's move that to the for accent. Okay, so let's go with pitch. So I can be talking in a high-pitched voice. Or I can be talking in a low-pitched voice. Or I can be talking in a mid-range pitched voice. So that's the pitch, you know, A through, you know, G. You know, um, you know, do, re, mi, pa, so, la, ti, do, right? And um, that's literally how you can practice starting to build a new character, is just change your pitch. Literally, you could take a keyboard or a sound tuner or a pitch pipe and pick which key you're going to talk in and just practice talking in just that key and pick which key you're going to talk in and practice just talking in that key and do it in a little sing-songy way and then get rid of the sing-song, obviously. But... Practicing all these subtle different pitches can, creates different characters because we each talk at a, a different frequency, you know, and our voices vary. And you know, some days we're more tired and it's lower, and there's all sorts of you know, testosterone and uh, estrogen. All these things affect our, our pitch at the time. But if you you can literally, as you're making an NPC, you can literally say, you know, D key as a starting pitch or something. Um, if you have something, if, if that helps you. You don't have to do that. You can say do, re, mi, and pick me or whatever works for you. Do, re, mi. Okay, I'm going to be talking around. So this is the area I'm going to start in without being very dynamic. But this is where I'm going to talk for this character. This is not my normal voice as a GM. Everything else I'm keeping pretty much the same, except I'm staying up in this range around do, re, mi, right around me. Okay, so that's where I'm talking. And then now I've got my character. And you now know this is a slightly different character than my normal voice that I'm using when I'm speaking to you. That's it. Just use a little bit different pitch. So, Dan, <clears throat> I want you to give me two different pitches. Actually, I'm going to push you. I'm going to give you I'm give me three different <laughs> oh, pitches. No. Three distinctive. The, the, the good thing is it's easy to do. You're going to do a low, a high, and a middle on reading those first two, that first sentence or two. So, first, give me your mid-range pitch that's not your voice. Pick something that's slightly different from your normal voice but isn't too high or too low. See, I've always felt like I was really, really weak on pitches. <laughs> That's okay. It, it, you don't have to be perfect pitch. It doesn't matter what's A, B, C, or D. So, can you do Do, Re, Mi? You know, do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do, whatever, something like that. You don't have to do the whole thing. Just give me the first three or four. <clears throat> do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. Okay, that's fine. And again, it doesn't have to be accurate. We're not doing singing. Mm -hmm. So, Do, Re, Mi. Do, Re, Mi. Okay, that one right there, Mi. Mi. Use that as your beginning pitch for your middle one. <laughs> yeah, so do, re, mi. Do, re, mi. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, nope. no, it's not there. Do, re, mi. Sometimes, this is where I'm going to, you're going you're gonna to keep it more monotone, mm -hmm. but try to keep it in that pitch. Do, re, mi. Sometimes, it makes sense to split an adventuring party, especially if you want one or more characters to scout ahead. There you go. Now, it's a little sing-songy, but that's a practice thing. Mm -hmm. But that's how easy it is to just put in a different pitch and be consistent. You can just put in your character note, me, am I, to go, do, re, mi. Then for another one, you know, do, re, mi, fa, so, la. So I'm going to talk up here. So let's, let's, let's actually, I'm going to push you on that. Let's do la. <laughs> do, re, mi, fa, so, la. Do. No. Okay. okay. Alright. Okay. Yeah. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, la. Yeah. So, la, la. Mm -hmm. And now read it from la. 
blah. Sometimes it makes sense to split an adventuring party, especially if you want one or more characters to scout ahead. Now bring back your projection enunciation at law. Law. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's okay. Law. Sometimes it makes sense to split an adventuring party, especially if you want one or more characters to scout ahead. I wasn't enunciating. Yep, try again. Remember your body posture and abdomen and throat. Sometimes it makes sense to split an adventuring party, especially if you want one or more characters to scout ahead. Yep, and that sounds like a different character talking. Okay. It does. So go back to me and read that again from me. We're only talking a few notes difference. Do re me. The thing is, I couldn't tell the difference for myself between me and I know, that's why we're going to go back and forth. But it is a noticeable difference. Do, re, mi. Do, re, mi. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la. Do, re, mi. Do, re, mi. Mi. Yeah. Sometimes it makes sense to split an adventuring party, especially if you want one or more characters to scout ahead. Okay, now, do, re, mi, fa, so, la. Do, re, mi, ah. I think I started lower. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Whatever works for you. It's relative. <sighs> Clearing up my lungs. It's fine. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la. Sometimes it makes sense to split an adventuring party, especially if you want one or more characters to scout ahead. So, it's a subtle difference, but it's giving you a difference. Now, let's do a do reading. Do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it makes sense to split an adventuring party, especially if you want one or more characters to scout ahead. Okay. Um, now at the top of your register without going total falsetto. So as high as you can go. Without going up here. <laughs> but as high as you can go. So no me. <laughs> whatever, whatever it is you're comfortable with that you can still do without clenching up too much. It might be me. That's okay. Or no, it, it, sorry. It might be law, and that's okay. We yeah. know you can do high. Because I think I can go lower, but yeah. I think law is as Well, low. but let's try to get you a, 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 You want a high-pitched one, especially if you're like doing feminine voice and stuff like that. So try to get up here if you can. <laughs> it's okay. Well, first of all, let's do fall. Can you do a falsetto voice? Like Mickey Mouse? I have a character called... Uh, that I, I've named Iggy, which... Changes my voice. Okay. And these are definitely on a higher pitch. Okay, let's hear it. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Emmanuel Dion Wanjun the Third. Okay, now do that without the bubble, the throat bubble. I can't. <laughs> you can't do that without, you can't no. do the falsetto without throat bubble. Yeah, I, I only had the throat bu bubble to do that. Can you do this? Do something like this? A lot of people don't because they're embarrassed by it because it's silly. But let it go. <laughs> Just have fun with it. I'm, you know, I'm worried. I'm, I'm testing the range. And it feels like it's going to crack. That's okay. Yeah. Nobody's, nobody's going to judge you if your voice cracks. Just go for it. Okay. <laughs> ah. Wow, that's really high. <laughs> can sure can you can speak at that? I think that's why above your range. So yeah. Bring it down a little bit. <laughs> can you talk up here? So falsetto is a different switch. It's not straight. You can be singing in falsetto down here. I don't know you to hear in falsetto, but all of that is falsetto. I mean in a lower pitch of falsetto. Where is falsetto in the throat? Um, let's <laughs> see. Falsetto, it's not so much in the throat. I guess it's a little more kind of the back of the head here. It, it, is, it, it is letting your voice crack and then keeping it up in that register. Okay. When the voice cracks, it's trying to go into my falsetto thing. Okay. Ah. It's okay to do. I don't know what, what's stopping me. Uh, most yeah. people are embarrassed by it. What you're experiencing is, especially for men, mm -hmm. very common. Okay. Because we're always taught to be macho. We don't want our voice to crack. We don't want to sound silly, so we're always trying to stay down here, even if it's not our natural range. But the last thing we want is our voice <laughs> to crack, and we're talking up here. 
right? <laughs> so that's a more common problem for working with, with males than females. Okay. I'm going to try and loosen you. Sure. Yeah. It works for you. Yeah, that was that was falsetto when you went do, do. That's falsetto for you. That's not okay. That's not a high pitch. That's falsetto. You switched. Okay. So I, I can feel good. the switch. So if you do a high do, do. Mm -hmm. do that's that false That's do falsetto. Do. Yeah, that's your falsetto. That's okay. not a that's not a real higher pitch. That's your falsetto. So use that voice for your high pitch falsetto voice. Okay. So go ahead and read that in high do. Do. Sometimes it makes sense to split an adventuring party, especially if you want one or more characters to scout ahead. Less breathy. <sighs> so less sing-songy, but staying up in that pitch. Sometimes it makes sense to split an adventuring party, especially if you want one or more characters to scout ahead. Good. Now less sing-songy. Don't do the sing-song. Just keep it up in that pitch. Sometimes. No sing-song. Sometimes. Sometimes. I, I'm, it's okay, it's yeah. a practice thing. Yeah. Sometimes it makes sense to split an adventure party, especially if you want one or more characters okay. to scout ahead. You'll need to practice on the sing songy, but you've got the pitch. Okay. That's your falsetto do, if you will. Okay. So that's your high end. You got your low end, and you got a couple of mid ones. And it's not an exact thing, it's that it's it's self referencing and so wherever your voice is at that day. You can self-reference that way in your notes for your NPC. All right. Uh, Danielle. So high is my, like, natural go-to easy. And yeah. low is hard. Yes, for women, it's, cold. Yeah, for women it's the opposite. So but let's start, exactly. you, let's start you in the middle with your normal voice, uh, just as a, as a self-referencing thing. Uh, and then okay. we're going we're gonna to go to do, re, mi from your normal voice, you know. Do, re, mi. So not too okay. high, but just slightly different than your normal speaking voice. <coughs> okay. <coughs> after the explosion in the stacks, there was a brief story about it on the news feed. Okay, they right. showed a video of the volunteer. <coughs> that sounds what? like your normal speaking voice. So, do, do, re, mi. Yeah. <clears throat> Bring it up just a couple. Do, of... re, mi. Yeah. So now read it, read it from me. The day after the explosion in the stacks, there was a brief story about it on one of the local news feeds. They showed a video clip of the volunteers sifting through wreckage for human remains. That worked very well. That sounded good. That had good energy. <clears throat> now do <clears throat> your... Can you do a falsetto? I know for women sometimes that's a little yeah. trickier. Okay, let's hear your falsetto. <clears throat> the day after the explosion in the stacks... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I always speed up and sound weird when I do that one. Yeah, it was a bit of a helium effect. <laughs> yeah, it does for me. I, That's okay. That's I have okay. a full okay. for singing, but That's I don't okay. know about, like... Just go for it. Okay. The day after the explosion in the stack, there was a brief story about it on one of the local news feeds. So they you, showed a video clip. So yeah. to me, that just sounds like you're just doing a high pitch. That doesn't sound falsetto to me. It doesn't? Okay. Nope. I, then I probably can't do it. That's okay. As long well. as you've got a high-pitched one that's distinctly different, that's fine. And, and I know you do. So now let's try to push you in the low register. How low can okay. it go? <laughs> Just try that. How low can I, it go? Uh, I might start coughing. And if I, do, I know. But again, try to, you'll want to try to make your throat relax while you're still going low. Your voice is going to want to tense. Your throat's going to want to tense up. But try to resist the yep. tension. How low yep. can you go? The day after the explosion, is, mm -hmm. there's a brief story about it on one of the local news feeds. There you they go. They showed the. We won't, we won't push you too far okay. on that. But that's. So there you got your three pitches. Okay. So let's hear your middle one. Your, your me, slightly above your normal speaking voice. Your me, do re me. Let's hear that again. <laughs> The day after the explosion in the stacks, there was a brief story about it on Good. one of the local news feeds. Good. They now, showed a video clip. Now your high pitch. I'm high pitch. N now do your high pitch. Oh, now do my high pitch. Yeah, that was, the that day was after good. The of, what? You, the, the me was good. You, you did that just fine. Now do the high okay. pitch. 
The day after the explosion in the stack, there was a brief story about it on one of the local news feeds. Okay, and now you're low dough. The day after the explosion in the stack, there was a brief story about it on one of the local news feeds. You can go a little lower than that. You were lower last time. <clears throat> The day after the explosion there you the go. stack, there's a brief story about it on on one of the local news feeds. That's it. Okay, so remember those three. You know, you've got your normal one, and then those three. Uh, Dan in Brazil. <clears throat> Start with your with your regular voice, then switch to a me voice. Right. Clear. Soon we shall know more than a fear could tell us. Son. Have you heard the vote condemned your bride? And are you here, maddened against your father? Or are we friends, whatever I may do? Okay, now do the do right. me. This is my natural sounding voice. This is my natural... My Literally father. do do me. do re mi. do re la just do, just do to me. do re mi. do re mi. There you go. Hmm, so so me. Back to your normal voice, try do re me. Do re me. Okay. Soon we shall know more than a fear could tell us. Now easy so, on the you're, doing, you you're breathing too heavily. Back off on the breath. Do re me. Right. Do re me. Soon we shall know more than a fear could tell us. Yeah. Son, have you heard the book condemned your bride? And are you here, mad against your father? Or are we friends? Whatever I may do. There you go. All right, now let's try to see if we can get you into the... Can you do a falsetto? Ah, my, you're a tall one, Chief. Good. Okay, so do short reading from in falsetto mode, keeping your enunciation, projection, and breathing. All right. Crean from Antigone is a gnome. Right. Oh, dear. <laughs> so... We shall know more than if you could tell us. Son, have you heard that was condemned your bride? And are you here, maddened against your father? There you or go. Or friends, whatever I may do. There you go, that works. Now let's try to do your lowest pitch. How low oh. can you go? How low can mm -hmm. you go? Hello. So, when you do it, you go, yeah. how low can you go? So you, you start as low as you think you are, and then you do, can you go? You try to bring yourself another notch down. How low can you go? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It seems not. There is no limit to how low you can go. We live in the shadows, the shadow runners, if the money is high enough. Now, now no do, it low, do it low, but without losing your energy. There you go. That's uh, it. That's much better. Soon we shall know more than a seer could tell us. Son, son, have you heard that will condemn your bride? There you go. And are you here? You got it. All right. And excellent. are you here? Not in against your father. Or are we friends? Whatever I may do. You got it. So there's your three different ranges there to play with. All right. Um... So remember, don't get too breathy. Try to reduce the sing song with practice. Mm -hmm. But now you've got three different voices right there, right off the bat, mm -hmm. just and, between those three. And actually, I don't think I checked my lowest range. No, and and you'll yeah. you'll you'll come up with more. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to give you the extremes, and mm -hmm. then you can come up with all the subtle variants you want. Mm -hmm. You could you could theoretically have 14 or more if you are really good with pitch. Mm -hmm. But I'm just trying to show you, just changing your pitch gives you a whole other character. Without any other accents or other things, just doing that now has given you three different characters, voices. Okay. And, and you can do one, whether it's a hobbit or a gnome or a girl or a kid or whatever, or just somebody you want to have a high-pitched voice or a cartoon character, whatever. You've got this, now you've got some range there that you can pick from right off the bat. Mm -hmm. um, so next is speed, your rate of speech. 
So, are you going to be down like the engineering? See how much they want to do. Okay, we got a hundred over here. Okay, you had to climb up over here, and he's the tallest one here, and he's bringing it all down, and he's worth three hundred pounds. Okay, we bring your three hundred pounds. Right, really high rate of speed, auctioneer style, versus slow talkers of America unite. So I'm going to have you guys exaggerate your different. Speeds of talk, so you can do it at a different range, and then you can practice that. You can speed up and slow it down, and also become more aware about where your speech range is at. So, Dan, taking that one there, I want you to do the <laughs> first one really slow. Okay. Just do the first sentence, only the first sentence, <laughs> nice and slow, like there's a comma after almost every word. So my normal speech voice. <laughs> no, no, slower than that. Sometimes it makes sense to split an adventuring party. Adventuring party. party. Especially if you want one or more characters to scout ahead. Okay. Now do that as fast as you can without screwing up. See, that's a hard part for me. I know, I know. It's called work for a reason. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm, ha I'm happy that I'm getting this. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Ah. You, you're welcome to try multiple times. If you screw up, just start over. No big deal. Smile and move on. <sighs> Sometimes it makes sense to split an adventuring party, especially if you want one or more characters to take out. Ah. Okay, now this time do it without losing the commas while still being fast. Sometimes. Right, so you still get the distinctive commas, but you're doing it fast. Okay. <clears throat> Sometimes it makes sense to split an adventuring party, especially if you want one or more characters to scout ahead. Okay, good. A little faster. Sometimes it makes sense to split an adventure. Ah. Sometimes it makes sense to split an adventuring party, especially if you want one or more characters to scout ahead. Okay. All right. So we got fast and we got slow. Now, the point is we're exaggerating extremes because then when you have a different character, you don't have to go quite as slow as the extreme. But there are people who just talk at a slower rate, slow talkers. And that is another character. And it might be it's still a slow character. A lot of times people associate pitch with speed, but they can be diametrically opposed. You can be a high, high pitch speaker, falsetto, and yet still be a slow talker, and it still works. It still sounds like how some people do talk. So you can mix and match those. Now you've created a whole set. So you can have somebody who's a high pitch talker who's like this, and then you can have somebody else who's a slow talker who's like this. And then you just have somebody who's a high talker, high pitch talker, but is a normal pace and the speed. That's three different characters, all as falsetto. See how it's multiply? And multiply. And multiply. So, and you can do the same thing. You can be a low, low, low fast talker and be down here and still be doing that down here. You know, generally it tends to be a little bit slower than you can do at a higher pitch and mid pitch. But still, you can be lower pitch and still be fairly fast speaking. All right, so I want you to go ahead. Okay. And go. Yes, Danielle? So when I'm when I've been going through all of the, um, the, the, the content, I've been doing a lot of it on uh, uh, one and a half double speed, and you sounded just like that right now. <laughs> Identical to what I... Okay. <laughs> it was insane. Okay. Um, <laughs> I've so... spent a fair amount of time like, listening to a fast forward, but yeah, right. it's just like, holy crap. <laughs> Understood. Okay, so Dan, let's have you do a... Fast, a uh, uh, high pitched slow speed <clears throat> of reading of that. Oh. Okay. Let me find it again. So, high pitched, falsetto. <laughs> trying to get used mm -hmm. to pushing yep. past that anxiety. Yep. <sighs> <sighs> Ah, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. 
And he said, uh, slow but high? Yep. Sometimes it makes sense to split an adventuring party. Not quite so breathy. Especially if you want one or more characters to scout ahead. Okay. Now do low pitch, high speed. <clears throat> Sometimes it makes sense to split an adventure. Ah. Don't lose the commas, though. I just realized that. Yeah. Sometimes it makes sense to split an adventuring party, especially if you want one or more characters to scout ahead. Faster. Sometimes. Don't clench your throat and remember to use your diaphragm. Letting the oxygen get back to my brain. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. you hyperventilated yourself. Yeah. yeah. It's actually too much oxygen. <laughs> you hyperventilated. <clears throat> okay. Sometimes it makes sense to split an adventuring party, especially if you want one or more characters to scout ahead. Okay. You'll need to work on the speed part, but you got the idea. Yeah. All right. Um, I... Danielle and Dan, we're getting near the end here, and I want to get through the other topics, so I'm going to keep using Dan here locally as an example. You guys should practice these on your own, but I want to get through the topics before we run out of time. So, um, then there's uh, flat or dynamic range. And so this is also the difference in the sing-songiness and such. <clears throat> so... A flat range is where I'm always talking in this range. I keep the same pitch and it's not really varying in pitch and I can speed up and slow down, but I'm still keeping it the same pitch. No matter whether I'm going very quickly, very slow, or very slowly, it's still the same pitch. There's reasons to do that. Some characters do speak in a more flat way, but generally to express emotion and feeling and context, we go all over the place. We're highs and lows, all within that, you know, you come back to tonal, you know, your, whatever the main pitch is. So if we're doing falsetto, even though I'm up here, I'm still doing a dynamic range. So sometimes I'm high and sometimes I'm lower, but I'm still staying in the same dynamic area, same, same uh, route, but I'm getting dynamic range. Dynamic range. So just try that in your falsetto. Dynamic, high, and then range. In your falsetto. Okay. So high dynamic and then low range. Or let me give you a full sense. Sometimes I can go with dynamic range. So start in the middle and then high low. Dynamic. Ah. Okay. Sometimes I can start with dynamic range sometimes i can step sometimes i can produce a dynamic range a little lower on the range range so you have to work on that a little yeah. bit range <laughs> yeah that's okay yeah. but I'm, I'm giving you the ideas now do the same thing in the low range you're down here not at your lowest because you need to be able to go lower mm -hmm. but you're going to be going dynamic range sometimes you can speak in a dynamic range Sometimes I can speak in a dynamic range. You didn't go up on the dynamic. Sometimes, sometimes I can speak in a dynamic range. <laughs> yeah, you went louder, but didn't yeah. really raise the pitch much. Sometimes I can speak in a dynamic range. Bring that pitch higher on dynamic. Sometimes I can speak in a dynamic. Yeah, you're just going louder. Sometimes I can speak in a dynamic range. Is there an opposite of a falsetto? Mm, there's, I, I don't, I don't know. If there is, I don't know it. But, but just, you're just going to go up closer to your normal area and then lower. Sometimes you can speak in a dynamic range. Because I feel like I've been moving my tongue back and forth. Yeah, you were getting louder and such, but you weren't changing your pitch. Okay. To make it dynamic. <sighs> mm. 
Sometimes I can speak in a dynamic range. Dynamic wasn't dynamic. So, so sometimes. Sometimes. Dynamic. Dynamic. No, nope. dynamic. Dynamic. There you go. You gotta change your pitch. Okay. Sometimes I can speak in a dynamic range. There you go. Now you're being dynamic. Okay. That gives you a high and a low to counter it. Because when most people speak, unless there there are people who speak monotone, so there will be characters that are appropriately monotone and say the same, you know, the same pitch. But a lot of people vary. There's a lot of fluctuation in your in your pitch there. Mm -hmm. So, but it's really easy when you're doing voices to get stuck kind of in this in a very flat range, and that's less interesting for people. It mm -hmm. feels less alive. So that's something to work on. Work on sing-songy reduction. Then there's the dramatic level that you're going to do. <laughs> Trying to express every emotion that you can squeeze into as little space as possible. Right, now that is getting into acting. Mm -hmm. And that's trickier to do and we don't have enough time to nail that today. Mm -hmm. But I was trying to express a whole range of emotions there in a very short set between anger and intensity and sadness and meekness and happiness and just all of that. Um, that's pretty complicated and that's a whole subsection unto itself. I was trying to do that when I was singing the song the other day. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So let's just very quickly falsetto. We're going to have you try to express two different, just two different emotions. So one is I'm very happy to see you here again. And the other one is, I really didn't mean to do that to you. I'm so sorry. So sadness. So one's very happy falsetto voice, which is easy. And then the other one's being falsetto while being sad, which can be a little tricky. Oh, joy! <laughs> a little more. Keep going. In the happy, a little longer than two words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was trying to find a step, you know, sure. step in. You, you could read that yeah. happ happily. Oh, Joy, I'm so happy to see you. Okay, now sad. You feel sad about something that happened. Oh, Joy. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and change your words. <laughs> Go ahead. Say I'm sorry or something like that. I'm so sorry. Wow, that's... <laughs> I'm so sorry for, for your loss. There you go. And that is emoting through the voice. Mm -hmm. And now you can do that any of your other pitches with any and with your dynamic range. And you've got a whole slew of options there. Now, um, affect. So this is your facial expression. Because a lot of people, even, even if they're having a pretty dynamic range in their voicing, have flat affect which isn't engaging for people, especially if you're on camera, but also for the players who are looking at you. If you're not changing your facial expression, um, you're losing a lot of that subtext. So sometimes you have to exaggerate it. You see that in a lot of movies, you know, that they have exaggerated expressions. We have the body language going on, and we exaggerate. So sometimes we're really happy, and other times we're really sad. And you exaggerate, and it's okay to be exaggerating, especially if you're working with younger audience, you know, mm -hmm. players and such. Now again, I'm exaggerating these things to extremes to help you practice. Mm -hmm. There's a whole range of subtlety in between that you're going to want to get good at over time. Mm -hmm. But start with the extremes first and then you can learn to fine tune. The problem is most people are afraid to go outside of their comfort zone, that's why it's better to take the extremes first. And then you expand your range and now you can dial it in and, and make it more subtle. But for now, we're exaggerating these things to help you develop these skills. So in this case, um, let's let's just have you in your me pitch. So do re mi, me, do re mi, and you're going to do happy with a happy affect. Me, oh joy, I'm so happy to see you. Yeah, now we do that about the sing song at some point. Yeah. Oh joy, I am so happy to see you. <sighs> Oh joy, ah, ah. Do re mi, do re mi. Oh joy, I am do so happy to see you. Do re mi, 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 mi. Ah, mi. mi. Oh joy, I'm so happy to see you. But you gotta smile. Yeah. I don't see the happiness. I'm trying to fake it till you make it. Yeah. Smile therapy. Yeah, it can be cheesy. That's okay at first. 
Oh, Joy, I am so happy to see you. Oh, it's Joy. It's so fake, but that's okay. Because <laughs> you're playing a character. It is fake. It's okay. <laughs> oh, Joy, I'm so happy to see you. Now bring it back up to me. Oh, Joy, I'm so happy to see you. Oh, Joy. <laughs> ah. Okay, now be sad. But keep your me up. Oh, I'm so sorry. I feel so much for you. Something like that. But... Wow. Saturate the frown. Okay, now you yeah, without tensing up your neck, though. Well, I'm trying to, like, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling tension. Yeah. I, I, a lot of times I feel Somewhere tension down. right here. <laughs> yeah. So I'm trying to you know, overstretch them to mm -hmm. break them up. Which is why you saw me <laughs> working yeah. the jaw. Oh, no, I know. Well, I feel <laughs> no, you don't. <sighs> me, me, me. Me. <sighs> me, me, me. No. Do, re, me. Do, re, me. There you go. Me, me. You just dropped. Keep the me up. I'm trying to, yep. yeah, get rid of the sing-songy. Yep. Do, re, me. I'm so sorry to hear about your loss. I'm so sorry to hear about your loss. Okay. You look a little disgusted, but you're getting the right idea. It, it's okay. It takes practice. Yeah. This is when you're going to want to use a mirror mm -hmm. or a video camera, you know, on your phone or something like that to practice. All right. Um, and let's see. So that's affect. Then we've just got volume. <laughs> that's different than projection. I'm going to be so loud! This is very quiet. Don't forget volume. People forget that all the time because they're trying to make me heard. But sometimes you get a lot more attention when you go quiet. People lean forward. And just doing that gets people to pay more attention than if you're trying to shout over them. So don't be afraid to use a wide range of volume. Um, stutters and other speech impediments. A, if you have them, you got to work on not having them. Mm -hmm. We talked about ums and ahs and all those. But also, characters are going to have stutters and speech impairments. Now, you got to be careful not to be mocking and all of that, but still, it's appropriate for some characters to have that. Don't forget to include those in your NPC descriptions if they have any speech impediments. A large number of people have some kind of speech impediment. Um, we're not going to go over all those because that's a whole other conversation on communication and speech but you get the general idea. Um, clenched jaw. So that's that Clint Eastwood, John McCain thing. So keep your teeth together while talking through your teeth. It takes a little bit of practice to not bite your tongue too when you're doing it. But give it a shot. Sometimes it makes sense to split an adventuring party. Yeah. Now, Especially if- Now open that just a little bit where you're keeping your jaw kind of locked. So you get a little bit of, just a little bit of gap there. They're not quite touching, but you're still keeping that tense jaw. Sometimes it makes sense to split an adventuring party. There you go. Now you got a whole other character there. Both okay. of those are two different characters. Um, the timbre. Now this is where it gets a lot tougher for people. This is where you're going with a gravelly sound. Oh, you're going with a clear, you know, a, a, a upper clear sound. Oh, uh, yeah, kind of a more nasal sound, talking through your nose. You want to really exaggerate that through your nose. That people who talk through their nose all the time. And so all these different sounds are really important timbres to consider. Um, T-I-M-B-R-E, by the way, if you can spell it. So let's try your gravel, which I know you can do. You yes. Can so let's hear your gravel. Sometimes. Okay, that's one version. That's a really harsh. That's, yeah, that that's is. Harder Try just a little bit gravelly, more like whiskey <clears throat> Paul Mall voice, not the orc. <laughs> voice. Just a little whiskey Paul Mall. Sometimes it makes sense. That's too. That's too trollish orcish. Back it off a little. That's too bad. So, so, uh, so just think when you get up in the morning, your voice is kind of hoarse, and you're, you're, this does require a little tensing in your throat. Sometimes. Sometimes it makes sense there to split go. an adventuring party. There you go. That's, there that go. is not as orcish trollish. That is just more gravelly. Okay. Okay. Now, let's have a very happy-go-lucky foppish type voice. 
sometimes it makes sense to split an adventuring party. There you go. And there's a lot of those other variables thrown in there. Mm -hmm. But there you go. You got it. Beautiful. And you've never, I've never heard you play a character that way. Mm -hmm. So you may have, I've never seen you do it. So that's a voice to use because it works. I was trying to do like a deeper voice of that with the, um, with more foppish with the uh, merchant. Okay. But I wasn't able to maintain it. Okay. Well, it's a practice thing. Um, then the last one, which is the toughest for most people, accent. This is the one people struggle with the most. You only need to find two or three accents that you can fake. They don't have to be accurate, but they're just distinctive. Have you ever learned any language besides English? Does the four years of me failing German count? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, in that case, technically I have uh, two. Okay. Um, my four years of German. Okay. Um, uh, what about the Jamaican? Patois. Yeah, Patois, uh, that's called Patois. Patois. That's the local Patois. Yeah, that's that's the local. It's actually called Patois. Okay. okay. Yeah. Much like a Creole is called Creole. Right. Um, and I've uh, been able to fake a Russian accent before. Okay. So let's start with the German one first that you can remember. So the way to do accents is if you can remember a phrase in the language, that helps a lot. So, like, with Russian, that's, right? It's like, hello, do you speak Russian? And then I'll be that's how I'm going to speak with that character, with that Russian accent. Right? And it's not perfect, but it, it, it sets it. If you ever watch Babylon 5, the guy who played uh, Londo, the diplomat, mm -hmm. the way he would warm up as he was getting all his makeup on to get a character, he had a catchphrase he used every time. Mr. Garibaldi! Mm -hmm. Mr. Garibaldi! Oh, Mr. Garibaldi! And that's how he would get in character, was that particular phrase. And so for each of these, when you create an NPC, have a little catchphrase that helps you get there on the spot, whatever it is, whether it's something in the language, whether it's a catchphrase that goes, oh yes, that's my mnemonic to jump into character. So what would be something that would help you with doing the German accent? See, the, the German accent I know I've had problems with because in my four years... You did not do well. Oh, it's more than just I didn't I, do well. I understand, but let's, let's not worry about that. I, I wanted to get get to something, though. Okay. I was told that I do a German, I speak German with a Spanish accent. <laughs> okay, that happens. So, yeah. but let's let's give it a shot. So what would be a basic thing you would say in German? Guten Tag. Okay, a little longer than that, though. Guten Tag would be the first part, then a little something else. Ich habe keine Idee. Okay. Um, ich nice weiß nicht. Sie. <laughs> yeah. Right. So something that gets the and some of the other key sounds for being German. Mm -hmm. Was, 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 right? You need, you need the Vs instead of Ws. So, guten Tag. Was ist das? Right? Would that be a good catchphrase for, you know, what? Sprachen Sie Deutsch? Was ist das? Something like that where it's reminding you about those key pronunciations. Guten Tag. Sprachen Sie Deutsch? Was ist das? Something like that. Give that a shot. Guten Tag. Sprachen Sie Deutsch? Ah, uh, uh, hold on. Guten Tag. Sprachen Sie Deutsch? Was ist das? There you go. So use that as your reminder. Now try to keep that accent, switch it back to English, and try to read that. I know that's harder to do it reading than yeah. to make it up on the fly. But. Yeah. Guten Tag. Was ist das? Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Sometimes it makes sense to split an adventuring party, especially if you want if you want one or more characters to scout ahead. Sometimes it makes sense to split an adventuring party, especially if you want, because the, the W should be a B, mm -hmm. you do the but. If you want one or more characters to scout the head. And again, I, I know it's not perfect, I'm mixing yeah. it a little Slavic, whatever, mm -hmm. but it's making it distinctive. So try to make it so you've got a little bit of, sometimes it makes sense to split an adventuring party, especially if you want one or more characters to scout the head. Sometimes it makes sense to split an adventuring party, especially you, if you want one or more characters to scout ahead. So, yeah, that's in the ballpark. Okay, now try to do that with your patois. Give me a and second. We're running a little over here, so. Hey, boy, what you doing? Sometimes it makes sense to split an adventuring party, especially if you want one or more characters to, to scout ahead. See, that one you got. That one you did in an accent, no problem. So that one you're definitely more comfortable with. Okay, what's the Russian one for you? Is it does with you? The Russian idiom? 
or whatever what Russian phrase works for you. Eat to by a post. I was playing Andre. My name is On. Ah, it's been a while since I've been in, been with Andre. My name. My name Andre. My name Andre. Sometimes it makes sense to split a venturing party, especially if you want one or more characters to scout ahead. So you do that. So the German one you definitely struggle with, so work on that. Yeah. But work on those. And then you've got your three accents. Mix that with dynamic and volume and pitch and timbre. And you've got a plethora of voices. And if you make note of which of those variables, each one's going to be a distinctive character. You can have 20, 30 characters, no problem, if you track those variables. Mm -hmm. All right. We're running over. But let me check in uh, with Danielle. Do you have anything you'd like to say? I'm sorry, I couldn't spend more time with each of you because we're running over here. I hope using Dan here as a guinea pig uh, helped you, though, at least follow along with, with these concepts and help you practice these on your own. Danielle, what would you like to say? Um, it, it was great. Um, I learned some stuff about how to make my voices more dynamic and okay. differentiate. Good. Good. Um, so I think you'll be able, next time you're running a game, we'll be able to hear some of those changes and, and enhancements? Uh, I hope so. I'm going to try. I hope so. Okay, cool. Uh, Dan in Brazil. First of all, I'd like to both thank and uh, ask for the forgiveness of Dan over here in uh, America for his being a guinea pig because it was actually quite enlightening. The, the conceptualizations of the different ways that voices can be different, and they are all, but for the most part, independent from each other, really, really help expand my conceptual mind space, so to speak. The only question now is a matter of practice. I was muted here. I tried to experiment with things. The thing I had most difficulty was accent. Because all the other things, they're very easy to imagine. Accents are culture specific, and it's yeah, they're not as easily yeah, definable. Yeah, if you, but don't, other than if you that, don't know the rules of the language, it's hard to do the accent. So what you can do is look up the rules. There's always quick little summaries online that give you quick examples of some of the pronunciation things for an accent. You can always find those online. Uh, sometimes just learning a very basic phrase or two can be enough to get you in the ballpark. Uh, and the other thing is, don't get hung up on doing a perfect accent. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as it's distinctively different for another character. So, for example, I've got five or six different Irish accents to, depending on where you're from, we can do the more Beatles kind of thing. Well, we're close in the corner, I've been going it over there. And yeah, we've got the other kinds here. And so you got all these different ones that are still Irish, but different variants. That's a more nuanced thing over time. But basically, if you can just get it in the ballpark and that it's different for each character, that's all the players care about. Yes, some nitpickers, especially linguist types, might be nitpicky about you slaughtering an accent or language and tell them, you know what, this is a pretend world, this is how it is, don't worry about it. Just trying to help you imagine a different character. Most people, they're not going to care if it's a really bad accent or not. They're just going to appreciate that you're creating that distinctive experience for each non-player character. And with the accents, what I was what I was doing when I was trying to do it is, it helped me when I was uh, trying to picture either a character that I've seen mm -hmm. doing the accent, okay. or well, for ex when I was going to Patwa, I was going back to, you know, I you know, life recently, experience. well, I can't really go with life experience because okay. it's been so long since I've been in Jamaica, but mm -hmm. I've gone back and watched, re-watched videos of people speaking native Patwa. Okay, okay. Yeah, and, yeah. If watching videos, listening to tapes is the best way to pick up a new accent and just copy it, right? Just mm -hmm. practice, practice copying. That's by far the best way to do it. Um, but don't get hung up on it being perfect. What matters is that it's distinctive. It doesn't have to be fully accurate. And it's okay to have a mixed accent because, hey, in your fantasy land, that might be the accent. There's, there isn't the same div dividing line between... Russian and German necessarily. It may be kind of a mix because that's that particular culture's uh, difference. Mm -hmm. That's okay in the role playing setup. So a lot of people are so worried about doing an accent correctly that they paralyze themselves and don't do anything. Mm -hmm. Don't get hung up on that. Just let it happen. And then over time with practice, you'll you'll build a, a, a repertoire, 
But with all these variables now, you should easily be able to come up with a dozen or more different characters. Now, what I'm, I'm giving you each homework. So for next week, I want you to write down and create five distinctive character voices that they are clearly different from each other using a combination of all these variables. And I want them to be as different from each other as you can possibly make them. So they're going to have different accent, different pitch, different speed, different timbre, all of that, all these variables. I want you to make five very different characters. So you're going to write down the variable for each one. You're going to create a catchphrase. And you're going to practice it between now and next week. And you're going to give me five characters. And even give your character a name. And if you want to give your character stats, if that helps you, like race and class and, st and what you know, all, go for it. Whatever helps you get into character. And I want you to come up with each one as a catchphrase. And then I'm going to give you random stuff to read in each character. So you might want to practice on your own just reading stuff randomly as each character. So all three of you, Danielle, Dan in Brazil, and Dan here in Spokane, <clears throat> That's your homework for next week. When we come back next week, we will start with each of you doing your characters. Okay. Almost walked off with this. <laughs> yeah, no problem. That's not fun. Yeah, it, it is, and and look at it as fun. It's homework, but it's fun homework. You're going to make five distinctive characters. Give them a name or a description or something that's distinctive, because then once you get these down, you'll be able to use these as game masters in your game forever, right? Mm -hmm. And and it's just a starting point. You. You know, I'm not going to keep making you come up with more and more and more. I'm just going to start you with five based on these variables. You can always go back and watch the video if you need a refresher. Remember, I broke into two separate videos, so the voice one is a separate one. And uh, remember all those variables, five very distinctive voices. And with now that I've broken it down for you, that shouldn't be difficult. It, it should be pretty easy for you to piece it together. As long as you practice it through the week, and you don't have to practice a lot. Take five or ten minutes once a day, but do it once a day. Mm -hmm. You can do it longer, great, but there isn't a need. Five or ten minutes. The longest is going to be just creating it initially. Yeah. Um, and I would do that as soon as possible before life gets in the way and you forget. Out. I do not want somebody to come back next week saying, I didn't do my homework. Okay? Mm -hmm. I know life's busy. We all have really full plates. But this is an important thing. I'm, I'm always writing you guys about your voices because it really makes a big difference on the game. It totally affects how the players experience the game. And it sets an example for how the players will play the game. And uh, 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 any of you who want to do professional work with me down the road as paid game masters need to have this down. It isn't the only requirement, as you know. There's all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. But you, this is one of the things as a paid game master, I want you guys to be above the average. And voicing is a key part of it. So we're going to start you with five voices. But on the professional side, I'm going to expect you to have between 10 to 20. So you're going to want to build a repertoire over time and make notes to yourself until it becomes automatic. I can switch to stuff all the time, but I've been doing it forever. And I have the theater background and everything else. So um, I expect my professional GMs to have a minimum of 10 to 20 distinctive voices. Uh, we're going to start you guys with five. And that will be a good start. And for most players, that's going to be plenty. All right. Any last uh, comments, questions before we wrap up for the day? Uh, Dan in Brazil. Just, just one, really. When's going to be our next meeting chronologically? I'm available for next week. I can probably make it for uh, a training session or anything that is, uh, even if it's midnight for me, I don't have, I'm not too busy, just so I know. Um, so uh, Sunday is Mist Heroes, Heroes of the Mist from 6 to 9 p.m., so you don't need to be there for that. Uh, Monday, 6 to 9 uh, 6 to 6.30 is administrative meeting, 6.30 to 9 is the rest of it, and it is an applied gaming session. So we are either, either Carla's going to be running Doctor Who, continuing that, it sounds like it won't happen, but in case she can, or uh, Danielle was talking about running something, right, Danielle? Yeah, so um, I have Sentinels in the Multiverse. Okay. Are and, you going to be ready for uh, that? Are, are you sure you're going to be ready for that? Yes. Okay. Um, my fiance is going back through the rule book real quick, just to okay. make sure I did it right yesterday. Okay. So, um, so Monday will be Sentinels. It's a weird format system. That's fine. So Monday will be Sentinels of the Multiverse, 
Now you're only going to have one shot, so make sure that it's something we can do quickly. Uh, yeah, in, in it's a, each, and a half hours. each one is 90 minutes and it has two good. scenes. Good. So I figure as long as we get through the first scene, we'll be okay. Okay, good. Yeah, so that's what's going on Monday, uh, Dan. Uh, and then Tuesday, of course, is our researchers meeting from 9 a.m. to noon. And then Thursday, we have the talk show from 4 to 5. Again, these are all Pacific times. And then again, uh, that this Thursday, 6 to 9, will be RPG theory discussion. Now, a question I'm going to be asking the Heroes of the Mist folks this Sunday is if we're doing a show next Sunday because of Christmas, mm -hmm. because it's the 23rd. Um, I will be in Seattle that day. Katie's insisted I do that. So I've got to ask all the Heroes of the Mist folks tomorrow if we're doing a show on the 23rd. I'm getting the feeling we're not going to do a show on the 23rd. It'd probably be best not to give so, some people uh, some break into I just, I'm really, if you cancel too many shows, I mean, we already have enough trouble with limited following as it is. Yeah. But it looks like the 23rd we're not going to do a show. Yeah, but people tend to be a bit more forgiving for and Christmas. And the 24th is, the, is Christmas Eve. Yeah. So we're not doing a show. We're not doing our normal stuff then, because that's a Monday. And the 25th is Christmas Day, so we won't be doing anything then. So basically, so we will be back here the 22nd, if mm -hmm. that works for everybody, to do this yeah. Saturday. But basically, that's it. Now, I will be remoting in for that. I'll be remote, so you don't need to come here, Dan. Mm -hmm. Use Jitsi for that. We'll do a remote session. And, and it might even be a short session. It mm -hmm. might just focus on doing the voices, each of you doing your thing, mm -hmm. and giving you feedback. And that might be our GM training session next Saturday because of Christmas. Okay. If I come up with a topic we really want to hit on, great. But I think that's the most important one to really get down right now. Okay. Um, and then I'm thinking at this point that after, other than that, the 23rd through 26th is off for everything. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. So, um, so that should answer your question, Dan, in Brazil. Yep, it does. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll try to attend. Uh, I probably have internet access at the time, but do, precisely because of Christmas and because I'm traveling to I mean, my grandparents, I sure. do not quite have control about ske control over scheduling, but totally I'll try understand. to I'll do my best to be here. Yeah, that, that's the nature of the holidays. That's the way it goes. I totally understand. No problem. Man. Just keep me posted. Uh, so, yeah. Just, uh, yes, go ahead, Dan. One more question, just to end our question. Have you ever been to Seattle? What does it feel like to be there? I, I've been to Seattle many times. My fiance is from Seattle, and I've been to Seattle all the time. That's amazing. That's like the place where Shadowrun takes place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Dad, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, oh, they're gone. Yeah. Uh, Seattle is, yeah, it's a town full yeah, of road rage. What do you mean, what is it like? <laughs> You're asking about what the environment is like and everything, or, I mean... That's, that's a complicated, I mean, it's a big city, it's sprawling, it's on a hilly green, there's a lot of green, there's a lot of overcast, it's sunny too, but it's usually overcast, and it drizzles on and off, um, there's a strong it rains smell. It like four times a day a lot of times. What's that? I said it rains like different times of day. Every oh yeah, day yeah, yeah, it totally varies. Um, there's a strong, you know, smell because of the inland o ocean there and everything, um, there, it, it isn't a fresh ocean smell. It's, it, I don't particularly care for Seattle. I'm not a big fan of it. Um, I'm originally from California and grew up in the Bay Area and such. Uh, and it's a very different smell. Seattle smells very different to me than, than the Bay Area, for example. Uh, but, uh, I, boy, that's, that's a really big question that could take a while to answer. Is there something specific you were hoping to learn about it? No, that was just a fanboyish yearning because, you know, <laughs> people who live in the U.S. might think, oh, I live in a very average place and there's nothing special here, and I live in Brazil, and then I think, wow, Seattle, that's where Shadowrun takes place. Oh, wow, Tucson, there's an RPG about this. There's, and, you know, it's just Spanish things, uh, just to end things off. Okay, all right, Sorry. cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll gladly fill you in more at some point if you want. Uh, and Danielle, anything you want to say before we say good night or good day? No, just good. Uh, good day. I'm gonna go take a nap. All right. That's well. <laughs> All 
All right, Dan in Brazil, you have a great one. Dan, thank you so much. I hope you found this productive and useful. Oh, yeah. Good. Absolutely. Excellent. And wherever you may be, happy gaming. Donate to RPG Research at RPGResearch.com. Click on Donate. We're a 501c3 nonprofit, so consider donating. And happy gaming, Namadie. Have a good day. <laughs> thank you very much.